This video is going to be another film study video look at James Houston IV, the sensational rookie or now second year player for the Detroit Lions from Jackson State University and Florida University before that. And really it's it's a speculative or or summary judgment, I think, of what his ceiling and his floor is. Uh, so I, I really don't like to use that designation because I don't like to put people in categories, but I think his talent level just shows you that what occurred in 2022 in only seven games played, besides being an unbelievable statistical anomaly, um, is just illustrates his talent level. It just shows what he's capable of if he's given snaps. If you're unsure of who James Houston IV is, you're well, you're probably not watching, but second of all, let me explain. He played very limited snaps in 2022, um, but had a tremendous impact. And the Lions' defense imp improved dramatically over the course of the season for, for a lot of reasons. I think one of them was they found a gem in James Houston IV in pass rush situations. Now, he will have to improve against some run concepts if he wants to start and play 40, 50 snaps a game. But they've got a lot of guys in that position. Let me give you some stats before we get to the film. Seven games played in 2022, James Houston IV had eight sacks in only 140 total snaps on the field. Along with those eight sacks, he had 11 quarterback hits. Now, this is not to claim that he's better than these three players, but this is for comparison's sake to three other rookie edge rushers, not Aiden Hutchinson, who's on his team and had nine and a half sacks. Trayvon Walker, the number one pick in the draft, 788 snaps on the field. Of course, you know, we can surmise that 60, 58, 60% of those were pass plays, three and a half sacks. Kayvon Thibodeau, 640 snaps, four sacks. George Karloftis, a little bit better than those two guys in terms of total sacks, 725 snaps, six sacks overall. You're talking about 13 and a half sacks between Walker, Thibodeau, and Karloftis in about 2,200 snaps. James Houston IV had eight sacks in 140 snaps. The only guy that I can compare him to for that percentage, and, even, and he even exceeds this guy, is Justin Houston for the Ravens. And you, Maybe you're not familiar. Last season, Justin Houston only played 400 snaps. The Ravens did a great job of limiting him in certain situations to, to pass rush uh, moments, to take advantage of his skills that he still has. He had nine and a half sacks in 400 snaps. He also had another, I think, 17 quarterback hits. I believe it was 17. Maybe it was 16. Those two are the only players in the NFL that I'm aware of that had sacks per play percentage numbers that are just off the charts. And James Houston IV would be all the way at the top right of that chart, even further away from Justin Houston then Justin Houston is away from the rest of the pack. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. Look, can James Houston IV repeat that performance? I mean, those numbers, if you triple his snap count, if you give him 420 snaps, is he going to have 24 sacks? No, I don't think so. But re the real question is, where does that eight-sack performance fit on the ceiling floor scale? That's the real point of this video, because I've already done a couple film study videos about him in YouTube shorts. I don't think eight sacks is anywhere close to his ceiling. I just do not. Um, I'm going to give you two reasons. I'm going to try to separate these plays into the type of move that Jace, J James Houston IV is using. First, his closing speed. His ability to close distance, I think, is unique even at the NFL level. I'm talking about the last three or four yards of pursuit to the quarterback or to a ball carrier. It's just explosive, extremely sudden. He finishes well. I haven't seen a lot of missed tackles. Now, granted, he only played 140 snaps, so if he played 700 snaps like Walker, Thibodeau, and Karloftis, you know, roughly did if you were to average them out, you know, certainly he would miss some tackles. NFL offensive players just too talented. But he's shown explosiveness on passes. Sacking the quarterback here, finishing the play with the LT swat from behind on special teams plays. You've got what I think is just an amazing open field tackle here against Justin Fields. James Houston, a fourth dropping out in coverage. You see him spot shadowed there. 
taking a great angle, exploding. How many times have you seen Justin Fields get tackled in college or even in his rookie season last year like that? One-on-one, sudden, you know, taken to the ground immediately. I just don't remember those things. But granted, I didn't watch a ton of Bears film and didn't really watch a ton of Lions film until, well, until after this game against the Bills on Thanksgiving Day. Look, I think um, James Houston, the fourth ceiling, is a 10-plus sack guy. That's just what it looks like to me the talent level is. Another element that I think I would like to mention to his game, and, and you've already seen one of these sacks, is his performance against the Bills on Thanksgiving Day last year. He played five snaps. Five. And Josh Allen's one of the stronger, more difficult-to-tackle quarterbacks in the NFL. You've already seen this play once, I guess, twice. James Houston fourth got him twice in five snaps. I mean, the Bills chipped him one time. See the end zone angle and now the all-22 view here? He's just a guy who plays through contact. His low pad level is so low center of gravity. His core strength, I think, is off the charts. I think his ceiling is so high because his his fastball, his speed rush, which you're you know generally seeing a lot of here, his speed rush includes a, a very low pad level, the ability to dip underneath of offensive tackles. I think he's 6'1 in the 235, 240 range at this point. Pro day at Jackson State in 2022, spring 2022. I think he was, you know, 225, 228. I think he's a little heavier now. In my opinion, he's got at least three different tempos for the speed rush moves, for the speed rush category. And I just don't think that advantage, the the burst, the explosiveness, the low pad level, I don't think it's going away. Is is that eight sack number his floor? Absolutely not in 2023. I don't well, I don't think I can say that it's it's his floor. It may be a little lower, and that might sound weird for how much I praise him and how big a fan I am of James uh, James Houston IV. Here's why. The Lions have a lot of depth at the outside linebacker DN position. Besides Houston and Aiden Hutchinson, who, like I said before, had, had nine and a half sacks, they've got Josh Pascal, played in the SEC four years. I think five years, maybe. I think he had a health problem one year. Two sacks last year. I think two of them were both uh, both against the Bears in Week 17. The Aquara brothers, I hope I'm saying the last name correctly, Romeo and Julian, they had two sacks apiece. John Kaminsky, who I just did a film study video about um, earlier this week. I'll link that up in the top right corner if you want to check it out. All of those guys can play an outside technique. All of those guys will get reps. Is is it possible that James Houston the fourth is limited to a pass rush, a a, a a part, part-time player, I guess it's possible, but if he has this much impact, and, I'm, and he had an impact on special teams. It's like he's just a baller. That group's solid all the way around. Kaminsky's a dude who will play everywhere from the four-eye to five technique to sometimes a six or nine technique. Hutchinson's everywhere as well. I don't really need to talk about him. Pascal had limited reps, I think, as a result of injury as a rookie. Uh, where I think Houston really separates himself from that group is how he threatens offensive tackles so quickly with the speed rush and then how he can alter the timing of that. And what I mean is check out the the timing of the, the timing variability of these three moves. You have the skip to Malou here that resulted in a sack, damn near hurt Trevor Lawrence. The stutter step that I think I rewind here for you once uh, that's got a slightly different timing than the skip to Malou. And then the next one, neither one of these three, in my opinion, is your typical speed rush where he's just jetting to the edge and trying to beat the guy. I think there's a little bit of hesitation here with the SWAT. He's got a staccato rhythm to some of his moves, in my opinion, that I think gives him an advantage. He can, the more typical speed rush is going to force the tackle to pass set immediately. And these stutter step or skip steps or whatever moves, they reset the timing. They allow him to burst low around the edge after the tackle has maybe hesitated, um, anticipating maybe a changeup, maybe a bull rush or an inside move. Now, to be honest with you, haven't seen a ton of bull rush moves uh, by James Houston IV. I think he's probably got them, just haven't seen a whole lot of them. His his ability to use his hands, which I think is illustrated on this play, it's why I, I got to pause here for a second. His ability to use his hands and the timing of it helps him play through contact. His low center of gravity, his core strength appears to make it very difficult for blockers to get into his chest. You can see his pad level here just by the nature of his strength, or excuse me, his height compared to the left tackle strength here. Give that guy real problems in this game, even though it's a completed pass. 
He's shown the ability to defeat multiple blockers on a pass rush in 2022. I, I don't have too much film of inside moves or bull rushes. Here's three here. Well, I guess it's only two. You get the end zone angle of this one against the Packers. Almost turned into a forced fumble by Aiden Hutchinson that James Houston has a chance to take back to the house, but you know the play was blown dead. He's just a great football player, in my opinion. If he was to add a bull rush or an inside move that could threaten tackles, I think he'd be unblockable in these pass rush situations. He was damn near unblockable in 2022. These This is not a bull rush, that third one. It's, a, it's an outside rush that he basically gets below the hip of the left tackle. Um, pretty unbelievable player, if you ask me. I'm a huge fan. I think he's got a great story. Uh, Deion Sanders kind of compared him to Micah Parsons at Jackson State's Pro Day in April of 2022, and I didn't hear negative things said about it, but you can imagine that there probably were. Micah Parsons had just been named Defensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL, and James Houston IV had just finished his one and only season at Jackson State. Now, granted, he did have 16 and a half sacks at Jackson State, playing as a, a D-end outside linebacker pass rush guy, whereas at Florida, he'd, he'd played a little bit more of an inside linebacker position. Nowadays, people call it off-ball linebacker. There is no such position, but that's a topic for another day. Here's his you know, one and only special teams play that I'm going to show you. Look, he also had a key block on a punt return for a touchdown by, I think, Kaif Raymond. I could be wrong there um, who, who, who it was. Um, he had a fumble recovery against the Bills on Thanksgiving Day on a punt return that the punt returner for the Lions fumbled. He has this terrific shock and shed tackle on a kickoff. It's not the only tackle he had on a kickoff. I think he had four last year, but I might be wrong. He's just a great football player. Deion Sanders wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. A lot of people probably thought what Deion said in April of 2022 was hyperbole or was hype. Turns out it was, wasn't. was Turns out Deion Sanders was right. James Houston IV can do damn near anything on the football field. There's film of it from 2022 that proves it, that shows it. I don't think eight sacks is his floor with the number of guys they have. I could foresee a situation where he only generates five or six sacks, even though he gets more snaps in 2023. The problem with me saying that is I think the Lions are going to win a lot of games. I think they're going to be in the lead. I think the Lions are going to be forcing teams to throw a lot in the second half of games, and James Houston, the fourth, is going to get a lot of Dead red fastballs, meaning he knows it's a pass play. He knows it's a pass play, and he can pin his ears back and attack the tackle like uh, he was allowed to do in the 140 snaps that he played last year, or the or the majority of them. I think he was on the field mostly in passing situations. Regardless of how many snaps he plays, regardless of how many sacks he ends up with, he'll have an impact for the Lions. He will. Force fumbles like the one you saw against Justin Fields, the LT SWAT. QB pressures that other guys clean up, or combined sacks, like you saw, I think, two of them here. Open field tackles that keep offenses behind the chains, like you saw his open field tackle against Justin Fields. Special teams impact. Clearly, I am not partial at all. This is one of my favorite football players in the NFL. I'm a huge Marlon Humphrey fan, huge Lamar Jackson fan. Even though I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan, I just think T.J. Watt is a once-in-a-lifetime football player, the things he's been able to do in his short career. Having said that, for me at this point, James Houston IV is one of, my, one of my favorite guys to watch. He just is. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's got tremendous potential. I think he has star potential in terms of rushing the passer. I don't think that potential is equivalent in terms of being a run stopper at this point as it stands in 2023. I'm very interested to see his progress there. <clears throat> not saying that he's not good against the run. I just don't have film to prove that. I don't have film to support that assertion. If I was to say he's great against the run, I don't have film to show that. All of the film that I have is generally him against the pass. And you can see he's dangerous as hell. Maybe it's possible I'm overestimating his potential. Feel free to let me know in the comment section. I think he's the reason why the Lions didn't draft an edge rusher. There was talk of the Lions drafting an edge rusher at 6 or 18. And they ended up trading back from 6. I never thought they needed one. And I've said that in multiple videos. And other people confirmed it as well. said, I never thought they needed one. I never thought they needed a D-tackle in, ter in terms of drafting one in the first round. There was talk about them drafting, you know, Car Jalen Carter out of Georgia. They did trade back in and pick up a D-tackle late. Pretty damn good player. Huge. 
I thought I think James Houston IV is in their plans. Pascal, the Okwara brothers, Kaminsky, obviously Aiden Hutchinson, those guys are all in their plans as well. James Houston IV, I think, is getting ready to explode on the NFL. Have a 10-plus sack season. Floor, I already said five to six sacks. But to me, that would include 12 to 14 to 16 quarterback hits separate from those sacks. I'm expecting 10-plus sacks. I think that ability is just there. Throughout the length of his rookie contract, I mean, what kind of – it's unbelievable how much value the Lions got out of drafting this guy in the sixth round. Throughout the length of his rookie contract, the Lions are going to be reaping the benefits. I think this is a dude who uh, is going to deserve to get paid well once he finishes his rookie contract. I hope that he has a 10-plus sack season because I want to see, you know, to be honest with you, I want to see more HBCU, uh, FBS football players, or FCS football players, excuse me, Division II, Division Three guys get an opportunity. James Houston IV, if you ask me, if you just look at the talent level, looks like a guy who should have been drafted in the second or third round, just looking at the way he plays. He was drafted in the sixth round, I guess because he came from Jackson State, even though he had 16 and a half sacks, even though his 4 six forty is 22 uh, bench press reps of 225, and his testing out at Jackson State's Pro Day looked pretty damn unbelievable. I just went back and read an article earlier today prior to recording this video, and the testing numbers, if you compare them to other guys in the draft, he, they were very favorable. Is he better than Trayvon Walker, Gavon Thibodeau, George Karloftis, even his teammate Aiden Hutchinson? I don't get into those discussions. This guy's a damn knife, a savant at rushing the passer. And if the Lions are going to be as good as a lot of people think they are, he's going to get a lot of opportunities in 2023 to rush the passer in dead red known situations where he can rush the passer and attack. And I think you're going to see 10 plus sacks from him. And this story is just going to get even better and better. Appreciate you guys' time. If you listen this far, please let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. One of my favorite players in the NFL. So it's very easy for me to speak for 17, 18 minutes on him. If you think other people would, other Lions fans specifically, would enjoy this content, would enjoy my commentary and the film study, please consider grabbing a link to the video and sharing it out on social media where you want uh, to help my video get more reach.